I'm Dr. Peter Derman, minimally invasive and endoscopic spine surgeon at the Texas Beck Institute. Today I'm going to speak about posterior cervical foraminotomy using endoscopic techniques. Posterior cervical foraminotomy and discectomy is an established treatment for cervical radiculopathy. There is extensive research comparing it to kind of the clinical gold standard of ACDF, showing that the outcomes are essentially the same. However, Posterior cervical foraminotomy has not been as widely utilized as ACDF. I think that part of this stems from the concern about neck pain. And part of this probably stems from concerns about index level reoperation. As far as index level reoperation goes, the studies are pretty strong that the index level reoperation rates are no higher for posterior cervical foraminotomy than they are for ACDF, about 1% per year. Neck pain is a legitimate concern, and certainly open posterior cervical foraminotomy, and even to an extent tubular posterior cervical foraminotomy, do produce damage to the posterior musculature that can result in neck pain for patients. However, this is where endoscopic techniques really shine. By using an endoscope, you can perform essentially the same exact surgery, but without the soft tissue morbidity associated with those other techniques. As a result, the studies are pretty strong that patients have less post-operative neck pain and have faster return to work. As far as indications go, they're identical between different techniques for, for aminotomy. It's patients with a cervical radiculopathy without myelopathy who don't have deformity or instability. And that radiculopathy can be coming from foraminal stenosis due to either soft disc herniations, bony foraminal stenosis, or a combination of the two. As far as technique goes, I position my patients prone on a Jackson frame. I put the patient's head on a foam pillow. I don't use any sort of skull-based traction. I don't think it's necessary for these. Um, the arms are placed down by their sides to be out of the way. After localization and infiltration of local anesthetic, I make an eight millimeter longitudinal incision just over the, to the side of the approach. And I want that incision to be overlying the medial aspect of the facet joint. The endoscopic cannula is inserted after a series of sequential dilators, and then the endoscope itself is, is placed down to the level of the spine. From here, the surgery really proceeds as it would in any other technique for a posterior cervical foraminotomy. So a series of burrs and kerosens are used to take down the medial aspect of the facet joint, first the SAP and then the IAP, and that allows the surgeon to expose out the exiting nerve root. You want to make sure that you complete that facetectomy to the lateral border of the pedicle above and below so that you know you've completely decompressed the foramen. And then you can investigate the floor of the foramen um, with a variety of blunt probes to make sure that there's no disc herniations or any ventral pathology that needs to be addressed. When you're done, the patient gets a stitch or two under the skin, a tiny band-aid, and they're often home within hours. I don't send mine home with any narcotic pain medications, and I find that they describe the neck discomfort as more of a soreness than a sharp pain, which is certainly different than if this is done using other more invasive techniques. One of the real benefits besides pain control, certainly from a technical perspective in the OR, uh, to doing these endoscopically is the quality of the visualization, which I find to be really fantastic for really two reasons. So one, one issue with doing these non-endoscopically is there's a venous plexus overlying the nerve, um, which can produce significant amounts of bleeding, not clinically significant, but it can certainly cloud your vision and make it more difficult to see what you're doing. With the endoscope, because of the positive hydrostatic pressure, I find that the bleeding is much less, and so I can really see phenomenal views of the nerve and the other structures. The other thing is the endoscope has an off-axis angle to the optics, and the beauty of that is you can see around corners. And so one of my favorite things to do is once I'm done with my decompression, is to actually turn the endoscope around so it's facing laterally toward myself. And you get this really beautiful view of the exiting nerve root as it, as it comes toward you out the foramen. And you can see the two lateral aspects of the pedicle sloping away. And, and that's how I really know that I'm done with my decompression. 
Endoscopic posterior cervical foraminotomy and discectomy is certainly a doable procedure for a surgeon who's comfortable with endoscopic techniques and has become a really important component of the treatment of cervical radiculopathy in my practice. <laughs>